Hey kids, have you ever tried to learn an exotic scale like um, Dorian Sharp 4 or something like that and grow exhausted just trying to think about it? I have an idea about that, which is to simplify it by playing the scale in two halves. So um, let's get into it. Hey, look, it's a guitar. So let's say here I am in the key of C. I'm going to do this with a with just this uh, straight up major scale to start off with and then we'll talk about some funky scales. So first what I would suggest is learning the lower tetrachord which is the lowest four notes of the chord from Do, Re, Mi, Fa. Fa, Mi, Re, Do. And thinking about the the scale in two halves so from Do to Fa, Do, Re, Mi, Fa or one, two, three, four and then five, six, seven, eight, or so, la, ti, do. There's your sort of E form C major scale, do, re, mi, fa, fa, re, mi, re, do. And then, so, la, ti, do, do, ti, la, so. Now, I'm gonna suggest adding one note to the lower four notes, just to divide that one octave scale from the root to the fifth, and then from the fifth to the octave. So you're going to go do, re, mi, fa, so, so, fa, mi, re, do. And then you're going to go do, ti, la, so, so, la, ti, do. So you've got now the scale, it's eight tones, but you've divided it in half for more chunkable, manageable parts. That's a, that's a tune we all know. That's a tune we all know. And then... By using the sound, and not so much the shape, because guitarists are very concerned about, concerned about shapes on the fretboard, you can learn how to play these two parts of the scale by sound and by feel. And what I mean about that is that, oh, here, I started on my second finger, as we often do in this position. But what would I do if, in the course of my playing, I actually ended up here and I started on the first finger. Well, how would I how would I find these notes? And you can find them too just by how how you would find them. And so you just practice this lower tetrachord plus 1. Now I cheated and I used the same fingering that I did starting from the second finger, starting from the first finger. I like that first finger, that fingering. There are other options. You could do like a fourth finger extension, reaching to the twelfth fret, like so. Or you could do going that way. You could do a first finger extension. And I would pick one, but the idea being that you're learning a fingering on the bottom four strings that starts on the first finger and choose one and get that memorized both in terms of the sound and how it feels in your hand, right? And learn that one and then learn one from the second finger and then learn one from the third finger. Oh, look what happens. We end up going up musically, but down the fretboard. Like that. And then from your fourth finger. So now, just by feel, you can capture this sound no matter which finger you start on. And that's a pretty powerful thing to be able to do if you're trying to improvise or compose because you can get the sound to come out your fingers, which is the idea, right? So all I'm doing is I'm just playing do, re, mi, fa, so, so, fa, mi, re, do. And I'm doing that from each of my fingers. Now, before I get started on the upper tetrachord, I'm going to point out that on the top, on the bottom four strings, six, four, uh, six, five, four, we have a particular arrangement of the tones, which is the same and the same feel as it's going to be. Or let me do it way up here on the f fifth, fourth, and third strings, like that. And so now I'm starting on my fourth. Starting my third, starting my second, starting
starting on my first. Up here, what? because I'm way up the neck and the frets are closer together, I'm gonna actually choose a different fingering for myself because it's easier higher up on the neck where the frets are closer together not to do this compression of the fingers. Sorry, that I'm kind of scrunched up trying to get in front of the camera, but there it is. And same, you're just learning in this other area of the neck, the same things just by feel, not by shape, not by visualizing it, by actually feeling it. Um, and it's great because then you're not bothering with the visual cortex of your mind so much and you can leave that portion of your brain a little bit more free to be thinking about the sound, processing the sound. Okay, when you move to the fourth, uh, third and second strings, the, the arrangement of the notes changes a little bit. It's the same until you get Actually, on these two strings, it's the same. As long as you're just playing on two strings, the strings are still a fourth apart. Here's from the second second finger, here's from the third finger. Oh, this is where it changes. When I get to that third string, that B string, the arrangement is different, right? That's how it feels on your hand. If I go back to this and I start my third finger, my first finger plays the same fret on both, whereas here, the first finger needs to come up. And then I can play this from the fourth ring. And now I've done that on all of my fingers. Could do it that way or I could do with the extensions. It's fine. Now I've done it in every place or at every location of string set, let's say but one, which is the top three strings. So I can go and look at that here. Let me move the camera just slightly. So I can start on the fourth finger, start on the third finger. You get the idea, second finger. Start on the first finger. Oh, that's very different than when we started on the first finger here. other things that you could do but I would learn one of giving yourself one option for each finger that you're commencing on and then when you get good at that I would actually reverse the process and I would start on the fifth on each finger because you might find some different things there that you might have not have thought of second finger right right You'll find some familiar places, but it's from a different vantage point. Okay, now you do the same thing. And I would take on these bits, oh, gradually, slowly. Don't try to get them all at once. You know, give yourself some time to, in, you know, to ingest each bit of this. Work on this like five minutes a day, couple of, couple of five minute sessions. And just go as far as you can go in that five minutes. Don't try to conquer the whole thing all at once because you'll confuse yourself. So just get a little bit and then keep adding pieces. So once you've added those pieces together, then you can work on, or even a part of it, you could work on in one area of the neck, however you want to organize it. Um, you could work in that one area of the neck and do the lower tetrachord and the upper tetrachord, which I'm about to do. So if I go back to the, to the guitar, and I say, okay, we looked at Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So. Now look at So, La, Ti, Do. The same way from the fourth finger to the third finger. Now notice something here. When I'm playing from the third finger, I still use my third and my fourth finger rather than trying to do my second and my third finger. Because this is what we call an extension. I've got a fret between these fingers and anytime I can, I avoid playing extensions because it's extra energy to abduct my fingers. Um, that I just wanna make the technique as easy as possible. I want you to do the least amount of work as possible so that I can use as little energy and retain as much energy um, for later. Techniques about making it, do, using, um, o doing only the work 
that you need to do. So from the fourth, from the third, those two fingerings are very simple, similar, sorry. From the second, from the first, that's one way. Another way is with the extension. I would learn them both eventually, but for starters, I would just memorize one of them, and then I would come back and get the other one. And that is every way to do that on two strings. With just four notes, you're really only going to need two strings. As, as far as a, sorry, as far as a handful. Except, because if I move this same figure, if I actually take it and start on the fourth string, it's the same fingerings. Right? Down to the third, start on the second, start on the first. Or with the extension. Right? The only place that this is different is when you play these ideas on the th the two strings, the third and second string, which are tuned a major third apart. Starting on the first finger, starting on the second finger, starting on the third finger, starting on the fourth finger. Now, there are other things you can do, and once you get the simple versions down, you might try things like moving across three strings. So you're more fluent and your hands are more fluent about how to find the notes by feel. And I want to just emphasize that, which is that you're trying to be able to feel these things rather than actually visualize them. Because then you're not, it's, you're not actually activating a part of your brain that you don't really so much need for this process because you're trying to connect the ear to the hands. And this style of learning is all about making that connection more directly. Now, you probably already know all your major scales if you're here trying to figure this out. Dory, what did I say? Dorian sharp four? Okay, sure. Let's do it. So <clears throat> these, that Dorian sharp four is a mode of the melodic minor scale. And I don't really even think about modes of melodic, modes of melodic minor or harmonic minor. I really think in terms of you know, W. A. Matthews, like utility minor and things like this. But um, if you practice these things in this way, it's really easy to organize these things. So if I do that, OPS. There we go. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, some light. So Dorian with a sharp four goes. I haven't practiced the scale. I just picked this out of the out of random almost from for the student I'm working with today. And so Dorian is one, two, flat three, four, five, six, flat seven, eight. And so if you already know your Dorian mode, you already know the top tetrachord. You it's the same as in Mixolydian and the same as in Dorian. And you can start that. I've moved into the key of D. I'm sorry. I guess I'll be consistent and do C. Oh. Right? This is a good gypsy jazz scale. Okay. So here... Okay, it's confusing. There's a lot to remember. I don't remember it. So what are you going to do? You're going to divide it in half. You're going to go one, two, three, flat three, sharp four. These fingerings can get a little spicy because you're going to have a lot of, there's an augmented second in these scales. So you've got some stretches. So start on the first finger. Start on the second finger. Start on the third finger. Oh, I've moved down to the open position. That's probably why I was thinking D. Fourth finger. I would move that up. Oh, let's actually move it here, right? So find a way to get that into your body, to feel that in your hands. You might like that one or you might like this one. 
I told you there were stretches. Right, but I haven't really thought about this scale, but I can do it because I've practiced this tetrachord. I've practiced that minor with the sharp four from the second finger. Ooh, this is spicy. But you have less things. Seven things or eight things is a lot to keep track of, but just keeping track of five is not so bad. Okay, third finger. Ooh, there's some interesting choices there. This is not a fun one. Oh, I went to my second. Ooh, sorry. First finger. And so forth. And then for the top tetrachord, you just have to learn this. And just like I did with major, you would move it all around the neck. But for the sake of time, I'm not going to do that. And you may want to start up, actually, if you're looking at some of these more exotic scales, it's a lot easier to practice these things on the top strings because they're going to have a lot less stretches there with the augmented seconds. Second finger. Third finger fourth finger. I hope that's helpful as you're trying to learn some of these. You know, some of my students come to me with something like uh, the um, the guitar grimoire or something like that. And it's like all these black dots all over the fretboard and there's so much to learn and it's confusing because there's this huge group of things. But just breaking that into two parts, just take any scale and go from the root to the fifth and go from the fifth to the root. Or I should say from the tonic to the fifth and then from the fifth to the tonic um, and explore those spaces and move them around just keeping in mind that the different three string groupings six five four five four three four three two three two one there's three different groupings six five and four and five four and three are going to be the same shapes or the same hand feels and then four three two is going to be different when you're on three strings and three two one feel yet different you learn those things and then you have it in your hands, those sounds in your hands. You've somaticized them, brought them into your body. I hope this was helpful to you. And, um, you know, pop a question in the comments if you have questions or if you want me to do another scale or whatever, however I can help, please let me know. And, um, you know, like, subscribe and all that good stuff. Thanks for stopping by.